Hi everyone, I know it's been a while since I've done a video blog, so I thought I would do one. And I know a lot of people kind of look at me and they're like, mm, maybe you didn't, you know, maybe I haven't lost that much weight. You know, they see some of my other pictures, but you know, it's really hard to fathom how big I actually got. And I do not know at my heaviest how big I was, but I have something to illustrate it here. Some of my old clothes. Now this first one, I'm, I'm layered, so. This first shirt, when I back out, you have to understand this shirt was too small for me. Now I measured it and it measures across, flat flat out, it measures 27 inches when I lay it flat and measure across the, uh, the middle of the shirt. So you figure that's 54 inches, totally around. And this shirt didn't fit me, it was too small at one point in my life. So let me show you. Okay, see this shirt? Look at That shirt used to be too small on me. So you figure it's 54 inches around and it didn't fit me. So I can like literally wrap this shirt around me now. And I keep this shirt for this reason because it reminds me of how far I've come. Okay, now I'm going to do what might look like a strip tease, but I got something on underneath this. This, I about died when I put it on because this dress I wore for my prenuptial at my wedding uh, six years ago. Well, yeah, it was six years ago. No, five, sorry, five years ago in August. Five years ago, I looked like I, this dress was tied on me too. Now granted, it is a little bit smaller than that purple thing was, but this dress used to be tight. I remember sitting there at my wedding and I was wearing this dress and thinking how tight it was. And I could barely sit, and it was so uncomfortable to sit in this dress because it was so tight. But I liked it. There's a little jacket that went over the top of it too, but you don't need to see that. But this was the part that was so tight. I put that on today and I kept thinking, and I looked in the mirror and I thought, oh my gosh, was I that fat? And you know, it's that's why I have to keep these few, just a few little reminders around to remind me of how far I've come. And this this, seeing this, gives me more motivation to get to my goal. And I'm so close to my goal. And I just feel it's right there. I just need to get there. And I, I can't go back to this. There's no way. And it, it is emotional because you think about it and you think, oh my God, you know. How tight was this? I'm about half of what I used to be. So you figure that other shirt was about 54 inches. You figure my waist at one point was bigger than 54 inches. And right now I'm about 34 inches. Still not in what I want it to be. But it's a heck of a lot better than over 54. Um, so I'm really proud of myself. And I know there's a lot of people out there who's like, trying so hard and you want to do this but you just don't know where to start and I'm telling you right now I have I have injuries I have a bad oh severely severely flat over pronated foot both of my feet are flat but my right foot is severely over pronated so much so that it my ankle bone almost touches the, touches the ground so you figure you add on at least another hundred pounds on my within my lifetime that causes that's going to cause problems and, and it does I can barely walk I know probably a lot of you haven't heard this but when I when I started my fitness I could barely stand for more than five minutes I could barely walk it hurt to walk to my car I couldn't stand up I was just I was in so much pain and my back hurt and my chiropractor looked at me and he says, you're not going to get any better until you lose some weight. 
And as hard as that was to hear, I needed to hear it. He was the first person that looked at me and said, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you have to lose some weight. And there was a few other factors, and I don't want to bring those out publicly because I don't want to embarrass anyone, but there was another motivation too. And um, I, I still have pain in my foot, I'm not going to lie. It still bothers me. I've been doing kickboxing, and my foot hurts because I'm putting so much pressure on my foot all the time that it hurts. But you know what? I work through it because there's nothing I can do other than surgery, and I don't know that surgery is going to make it any better. It could make it worse, so there's no point. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I can't do this or I can't do that because I got this problem, I got knee problem, I got foot problems, I've got this or I got that injury, there are alternatives. You do not have to run a marathon if you've got knee or feet problems. Don't try it. You're not ready for it. You need to start simple. You want to know what I started doing? First thing I did, I, bought, I got a bicycle exercise bike. And that's what I did. 10 minutes at a time, that's all I could handle, was 10 minutes at a time on a bicycle. And I slowly worked myself up to where I could go for an hour. And then I worked into doing weights. And then I started my diet. And then it just kind of have blossomed from there. But please, 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 first of all, like, like uh, Bill and Jim Germanakis. I think I said that, Germanakis. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, no more excuses. My knee, I got arthritis in my knees. Your arthritis will not get better until you get out and get moving. Trust me, I have it in my hip and I have it in my shoulder. I have a type of arthritis. It's better. It will get better. You have to move or else you could end up in a wheelchair. Don't let that stop you. Work through it. Start low impact on a bicycle. Okay, stationary bike, boring. Yes, I know that. But do it. Do, I don't care how boring it is. Sit there, watch a movie in front of your TV and just pedal, just move. You've got to move. I don't care what you do. But do me a favor. Don't start with something high impact that your body can't handle. You can't do that when you first start. Now start slow, start small amounts. Start 10 minutes at a time if you have to, three days a week. Increase it by 20 minutes, three days a week. And as you go, add more time, add more days, add, you know, whatever, but don't just start off with a bang, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to lift 200 pounds, and I'm going to run a marathon, it's just, it's not realistic, so the only advice I can give you, start slow, start within your fitness level, you have to start within your fitness level, if you've got any kind of injuries or anything, get on the bike, go to a spin class, and spin, that's the best exercise you can get if you've got an injury. No excuses. None. I don't want to hear it. Your knees hurt. Your feet hurt. Get on a bike and spin it out if you really want to do it. If you really want to do it. And quit eating out. Quit going to Burger King and McDonald's and just pack your lunch the night before and put something healthy in it and whatever you pack, that's what you're going to eat for the day until you get home. Don't stop at McDonald's, don't stop at Burger King or Long John Silver's or whatever your fancy is. Just stop doing it. I don't go to those places. I cannot tell you when the last time it was I had a burger and fries. It's been a really long time. Now pizza is my Achilles heel. That I have a problem with, but I haven't had it probably six months. Especially now that I've had my surgery, I can't really have a lot of fatty food. Anyway, I hope that this inspires some of you. Um, it's inspired me to want to get back and make sure that I've reached my goals. So I love you guys. Take it easy and, you know, let me know if you have any questions. I'll do what I can to help. But no excuses. That's not my, that's not my mantra either. That's uh, Bill and Jim Germanaco. So I don't want to take credit for that. But no excuses. Listen to what these guys have to say. Talk to you later. Bye.